Alright guys, welcome back to another little video, and today, today we got kind of a fun one, because today I upgrade to an 8 core 16 threaded chip for the first time. So today we are going to be talking about my experience when upgrading Goji to the E5 1660 V3, which is the exact same CPU as the i7 5960X. So, yeah, let's get into it, shall we? Okay, so the first thing that I need to do is go over all the specs of Goji before I forget. So, Goji originally had an i7-5820K overclocked to 4.5 GHz, uh, as well as a 3.5 uh, ring bus frequency. The RAM is 32 gigs of Team Group T-Create uh, running at 2666 CL14. My graphics card is an RX 5700 XT Liquid Devil. The entire system is water-cooled. And the only thing that I changed out of the entire system was the CPU. So going from a 5820... From going from a 5820K to a 5960X, essentially. Uh, of course, it's the Xeon equivalent because it's just cheaper. But it is the exact same CPU. It's fully unlocked and everything. So, without any further ado, let's get into some of the benchmarks because I think I've got a lot to talk about today, and frankly, I think the benchmarks are just going to show my point better than anything. So, let's get into it, shall we? Okay, so as you guys can see, I have two benchmarks running on the screen right now for Cyberpunk 2077. The top screen is from the 5960X, and the bottom screen is from the 5820K. And as you guys can see, there is almost no difference between these two benchmarks. Uh, this is Cyberpunk 2077 running at 900p high settings, and there is effectively no difference. This is kind of my first indication that this CPU upgrade may not have been as important as what I thought it was going to be. Also, uh, the 5960X is running at a 4.2 gigahertz frequency as well as 3.4 gigahertz on the uh, ring bus. Once we get to the end title screen, you guys can see that the two runs were within variation of each other. I'm not sure why the 5960X had slightly lower 1% uh, lows, but overall the averages were practically identical, and frankly I could not see a difference when experimenting with Cyberpunk 2077 between these two CPUs. Moving on over to the next game was Satisfactory. Now, I admit that I did take the footage from two different times. The first time that I took the footage, I had not fully completed a factory yet. The second time I took the footage, I had. So, the 5960X definitely had a little bit of a harder time rendering everything, but again, I saw almost no effective difference between these two CPUs in, again, this tip, uh, particular game. The next game that I tested was Dota 2. I uncapped the frame rate and dropped the graphic settings down as low as it would possibly go. Uh, both CPUs performed practically identically, again, both giving absolutely fantastic results, and... I could have been playing on either one of them, and I would not have known the difference. And now finally, Grim Dawn, which was the only game that I actually did see a little bit of a difference. Grim Dawn is built on an older engine that has the tendency to stutter really badly when you uncap the frame rate. The 5960X did run slightly better when it came to uh, the 1% lows. So, in other words, I was able to perceive a little bit of a difference, although not a great deal of one. Okay, so, it sounds like upgrading to the 5960X, or E5 1660 V3 if you want to be technical, it didn't seem like it was really worth it, was it? Well, this is where things get a little bit more interesting. On the surface, the E5 1660 V3 seems like a chip that was practically pointless for me to get. But there is one time that I actually did notice a significant increase in actual performance, and that is when heavily, heavily, heavily multitasking. I can 
watch YouTube while having a video timeline open in the background and playing a game at the same time, and I see no slowdown on anything. Having the ability to play a game like Grim Dawn and then on a second monitor be running uh, full-screened Dota 2 uh, Pro matches has been actually fantastic. I've not noticed any drop frames from anything, and again, not exactly something that I was really expecting uh, because the 6 cores have always been pretty good for that, but the 8 core just simply takes it to a whole new level. Having those 2 extra cores, 4 extra threads, really does help with the multitasking performance. Again, to a pretty significant degree. Um, yeah, this is about it for the video. Um, I'm sorry guys that this one, this is a video that I was really anticipating and it could have been a lot better, but... This is going to be for my normal viewers who know me a little bit. If you guys remember, I had talked about in the last video how my poor puppy dog was still pretty sick. Well... She passed away two weeks ago at the age of 12 and a half, so... I really haven't been in the mood to make videos, and even something like this that I was really excited for originally has just kind of... Eh. So, I'll probably do another follow-up video in the future talking about my experience with the CPU. But this thing was kind of a turd overclocker. Most 5960Xs I've seen will run at 4.5 to 4.6 GHz at the same voltage I'm running at 4.2. Also, there's coil wine coming from the CPU, which I've never freaking seen before. Um, yeah, that's about it. That's about all I got for today. I'll see you guys later. Peace.